see them more than the first time, which I think is an interesting thing. So the more I'm practicing, the more I'm uh, advocating. I uh, signed up for another course uh, already, and it'll be at the end of January, and I'll be serving this course. Hmm. So what does that mean? Well, uh, when you're serving, the, you get meals doing the pasana, 7 o'clock in the morning, you have breakfast, and at 11, we have a lunch. And people taking the force, their first ever course will get a light meal at 7. Okay. Here on your second course or more, you get no meal after 11, so you do a long fast from 11, 11 o'clock lunch to 7 a.m. breakfast. But uh, servers prepare the meal. Basically, my role will be to help the people meditating have their best possible experience. Um, and so, people who are not servers meditate 10 hours each day. Those who are serving meditate 3 hours, 3, 1 hour, 6. And the rest of the time, they are working on facilitating uh, this experience for everyone. There is a code of silence for the people that are meditating. The servers uh, are in a position where there are times where they have to talk. And so it's a different kind of practice because uh, one thing they teach you about is right speech. And so your speech, just like the way you're, you're, you're doing your thoughts, your speech should be really um, to the point necessary, no diversions. It's like when you watch your thoughts, you watch your thoughts take off and go all over the place. And they go way off topic. Uh, it's very, very normal to have a chaotic mind when you first start meditating. This is very, sorry. Yeah. Very interesting though, uh, especially for yeah. somebody who has schizophrenia. When yeah. all of those voices are coming in, Yeah. that's really interesting. And you're, because, you know, that's what I've spent you know, I've had schizo I'm schizoaffective, and I've had that since 2006. Yeah. And since then, I've been trying to figure out how to work with the voices and yeah. how to send them away, tell them to stop saying things. That would be resistance. So yeah. a Vipassana method would say, no, don't resist. You know, just observe whatever voices you're getting. No matter how strange, just observe. And say, okay, here's a voice. You know. So it could be highly beneficial yes. to somebody with schizophrenia. I, I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's only very few instances where I don't, don't think it's beneficial. Okay. And they, they talk about that. If you're mm -hmm. signing up, they'll go through. Um, one thing is if you've had a very recent traumatic experience where you, you're having a lot of trauma, they recommend not doing it because it'll be just too intense mm -hmm. to actually go through the sitting. Mm -hmm. So you want to give it some distance. Yeah, um, I was reading the, um, whatever you want to call it, sort of like the things that you should know before you sign up because yeah. Ryan was talking about it and then I kind of became interested in it and one of the things said that if you do have a serious mental illness then you probably shouldn't do it but I think that's the kind of thing that you can maybe talk with to one of the facilitators yeah. that's had you know lots of years of experience doing it because mm -hmm. they might know more about that they might you know interview you first of all and see kind of where you're at maybe. yeah it probably depends what level you're at you know mm -hmm. yeah, yeah for sure yeah but I think in any case um, just having the observation of the voice is going to help yeah. A lot. Yeah. Um, but on that subject of it being able to help a lot of people, um, I purchased a book while I was there. At the last day, they set up a book counter, and you're, you're talking to people on the last day. And uh, it was about people who put on a course in a maximum security prison, like the most hardened criminals cool. around in uh, a prison in Alabama. And it gives accounts of their experiences while doing the course and after. And one of the phen phenomena that occurs is that um, I think in general, uh, I can generalize that the harder case you are going in, the more motivated you'll be coming out. And you'll see the more of a difference. It benefits everybody. I'm not exactly, you know, a chaotic person, and even before going in, I'm more relaxed than the average person, I would say. And so, 
but I still have experienced some really big differences. But these criminals coming out, it's just uh, completely changed their entire life. Wow. And you can see it through reading the book. And there's a video too, which I've, I intend to look at sometime. It's on the same thing. Um, and yeah, they just become model, model citizens in the cell. Mm -hmm. Now these are people that have murdered, they've done really hard things, have no functional relationships in their life at all, and then they come out and they're completely changed. Mm -hmm. right? Wow. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to listen to another 